the special operation has officially ended. It lasted for two weeks and it was highly successful. Now, a little fun fact, uh, during our special operation I actually haven't docked in a station for over seven days, so I actually had to log out my ship in space and this is me docking the Hyperion for the first time in over a week. So, uh, during our special operation I thought about trying something, trying something new out and I figured out, well, let's try a micro warp drive on the Hyperion. Now, I sacrificed one armor repairer, so Undocking. I'll definitely, my tank will definitely be impacted by this. But let's try it out. And I, I'll admit, I actually forgot how fast the Hyperion is. It's definitely not the slowest uh, battle, battleship. Definitely going towards the quick side it goes one kilometer per second uh, with the current fit now keep in mind i don't have any auxiliary thruster on the hyperion basically this ship is a full tank ship and for a full tank ship to go over a one over one kilometer per second that's that's actually really good and i cannot complain about the speed <coughs> on this ship. Docking request accepted. So that means in the future I might use a afterburner or micro warp drive on the Hyperion. Should work really well with the blasters to quickly go in range. Now let me just return the fourth armor repairer just in case if we have another special operation coming up soon. Okay, now the Hyperion is back in its original shape. Speaking about tank, I'm going to be getting the nano core for the ship very soon. Was very, very good with the Concord Pass, and I only need around eight, nine thousand more Concord points in order to get the Hyperion nano core. Now, by the time I think they might release a new nano core, I'm not entirely sure. But once I get enough Concord points, I'm definitely going to get a core for the Hyperion. And of course, I will be improving the tank of this ship. Because why not? The Hyperion, at least this Hyperion, is all about the tank. So far, the tank did last extremely well. Okay, let's undock and let's have some fun. First target, we have a Murmuron that that is just sitting there and they're locking me on okay and they are active interesting is this hype is this Myrmidon a a bait that's the question and I almost called the Myrmidon a Hyperion well they're kind of they're very similar both have armor repair bonus both are very very nicely tanked so I guess they're quite similar one interceptor has also joined the party the Myrmidon is shooting at our bubble but they are slowly going down the interceptor decided to quickly take range and they have left the Myrmidon we have some other neutrals in local Myrmidon has been destroyed and the interceptor is way too far away for for my uh, railguns although I believe that interceptor will come closer a little bit later we will see what will happen another interceptor has warped in well, they have warped out. Interesting. My maximum range with the rifled railguns is around 120 kilometers. That's the that's the longest range at which I can hit targets. Above that, it just misses. But 
small targets that are not moving, I can hit without a problem. Alright, well, looks like we are going to have some company. There is 13 in local. And that one, Sunensis, just popped in. Let's shoot it down. Okay, the destroyer has been destroyed. We are waiting for the first ship to land. This should be fun. Still nothing on... Oh! We have a Vindicator. Nice. This is about to be fun. There is 14 in local. Out of 14, 4 are part of the fleet. The rest are all neutral okay let's go and point the vindicator a stabber has warped in the vindicator slowly well the vindicator lost shield okay now they are into armor they're taking big hits they are pointed they are in the bubble let me park my ship right here, okay. Vinicator is now into low armor. Uh, they are now into hull. Looks like they use armor plates. And the Vindicator has been destroyed. Nice. So you might be wondering, where is the rest of the fleet? Well, the rest of the fleet stopped their ships from warping. Because we made a little mistake in timing. But that's okay, we still got that one faction battleship. Next target, we have a Phantasm. Phantasm using a afterburner. They are quick ships. They are still within range, however. I have range up until 120 kilometers. So I should be hitting the target without a problem until that range. They're now at 55 kilometers. The shield of the Phantasm slowly going down. Phantasm is actually super tanky, especially especially with the shield bubble, although it's still quite easy to shoot one down. Phantasm will be in low shield very soon. Not quite sure if they have a large shield booster. I wouldn't say that they have a large shield booster because I don't see the... Oh well, that did not last long. The Phantasm has been destroyed, nice. Did not see a large shield booster on that Phantasm. Usually the Phantasm does use a large shield booster. One or two large shield boosters. They work really well on that ship. My first faction cruiser was a Phantasm. And my first faction cruiser loss was also a phantasm. Kind of fun. So, uh, looks like we have poked the beehive and we have one, two, three, four, five battleships. There is 23 in local. Okay. There is also two battle cruisers and a cruiser. The cruiser is one Ashimul, and there is one Dramil that is lurking around. Now that fleet is a little bit, a little bit too heavy, honestly. We have only, we have only like four ships. Perfect opportunity to to do another tank test 
on on the Hyperion. They also have a Nightmare, so that Nightmare might be a little problem because the Nightmare will have the shield bubble and the Nightmare will keep the fleet safe. There is the Dramil going after my Hyperion and we have two snipers or that might be one Ashimu below me that's Ashimu below me okay I see that the Belgorn is out of the bubble so the Belgorn might be the sorry that's not the Belgorn that's a that's a Hyperion the Hyperion might be the next uh, target to shoot at so but looks like the Nightmare is the primary target. Well, I am now the primary target. The Nightmare stopped taking damage at 50% shield. And I believe they also have a couple logistic ships because the Nightmare is now repairing its shield. Most likely active shield tank nightmare with couple logistic ships. Although I don't quite see any logistic ship, but I'm pretty sure that they have one or two. Guess it will be time to jump out soon because Autopilot yep, engaged. my hole got scratched and that's that means it's time to go that's a little bit too much dps even for this hyperion it should improve once i get the nanocore for this ship should be a noticeable improvement in tank with the nanocore but still it held out really well against a whole cta fleet which is still very impressive. Okay, next target we have a Tempest. Interesting. I think this Tempest is a bait Tempest. We will see. This Tempest also has a Nano Core. And it is a heavy shield tank. Nice. They are approaching the gate. I think they're approaching the gate. They are now shooting at the bubble. They have a very good shield. The tier 9 battleships are actually very nice if you have a nice build on them. Now the Tempest is aligning itself towards, I think, towards the gate over there. They use shield extenders, okay, so it is a buffer tank Tempest. The first big hit from the Dreadnought and, well, the Tempest has warped out. That's okay, sometimes, sometimes we get the kill, sometimes we don't, and that's okay. Was still a nice attempt. Good fight to the Tempest, they almost had our bubble pilot. They also had dual webs and a scrambler, which is a very good defense against small ships that do get close to you. Or triple web and one scrambler. Now, remember that interceptor from uh, from the start of the video? Well, the interceptor has been destroyed. I decided to camp this gate solo a little bit, and well, the interceptor just warped in and stood there, and well, I took. I took advantage of that little situation to shoot down the interceptor. Later they brought the fleet, but they jumped through the gate. Interesting. Let's wait for a little bit longer, maybe maybe they come back. I'm lurking on the gate. Now the fleet from before did not come back unfortunately. I guess they went out to run a storyline mission so 
uh, our bubble pilot has returned and we continued to do what we like to do. That was a nice ram by the way. Just in case the the RB is a Sino ship. That's why you usually see me looking at these ships because I never know when they can pop a Sino out. And if they drop a Sino, we might be in trouble. So uh, it's good to it's good to observe the ship and what the ship is doing. Next target, we have a rattlesnake. The rattlesnake has been engaged. Let me quickly go and point the rattlesnake just in case. This is the Hyperion build with the micro warp drive. The my co-op drive on this ship runs really well, surprisingly well. I actually did forget how fast this ship is. Rattlesnake in hull and the uh, Rattlesnake has been destroyed. Very nice. Another faction battleship goes down today. Excellent, excellent work. And some decent loot as well. Next target we have a Abaddon. Another, another tanky ship. This Abaddon has a lot of armor, so most likely a passive tank Abaddon, which still runs really well. Uh, we did do some tests, and the armor tank, armor plate tank Abaddon does end up with a draw if you fight uh, with a active tank Hyperion. Both ships lose capacitor at the same time and both ships end up in low armor at the same time. So that's one very interesting little uh, very interesting little thing about these two ships. And that was also a nice skill. Next target we have a Armageddon and there is a cover top ship lurking around. Well it there was a cover top ship they warped away. Armageddon is now into uh, the hall. Doesn't look like they have a nanocore, however it looks like they have a skin on the ship. Not 100% sure. In any case, the Armageddon has been destroyed. Very nice. That means we can go towards the next target. The next target we have a Daredevil. And the Daredevil is active. They are burning away from the gate. Let me try to approach. Maybe I can get the transfer of velocity low enough to hit the ship. Although that might be difficult, the Daredevil is a fast little ship. Very hard to hit fast moving targets with the with the railguns because they have very poor tracking. So my guess is to try and lower the transversal velocity, and I have time to do that until the Daredevil is. 120 kilometers away from the Hyperion because after that range I'm not going to be able to do any damage well I scratched the shield of the Daredevil so I guess I should be returning to the gate now because already going to be too far away well I, I think our bubble pilot will deal with that turtle without a problem. Although I could technically go to the gate and then warp towards my corp mate and then open fire on the turtle. That also works, I guess. But I don't want to steal any kills, so let's just Let's just wait out and see what happens. Just in case if my friend needs help, I will I will go, but it looks like the 
the Daredevil is going down. We have a small local spike. Although it doesn't feel like we are in trouble. And the Daredevil has been destroyed. There is one Oracle, but the Oracle will warp away because... The bubble is 150 kilometers away from the gate. That's okay. We did manage to shoot down the faction rigid. Next target, we have a narrow stool. Well, uh, let's cross our fingers and let's hope for a citadel drop. Would be nice if we would get a citadel. Would be nice if we would get a citadel drop. Let's take a look. Oh, 2 billion and 12. We got some capital siege arrays. Well, okay, not bad. I'm definitely not going to complain about that. That means it's time to go get the transport ship and let's loot that wreck. Next target, we have one oracle. Oracle seems to be using a micro warp drive and they are trying to burn away from the gate. Now the thing is, the micro warp drive will increase the signature radius. And well, uh, the velocity on the Oracle is similar to the velocity of my Hyperion. All that combined, it makes it easy for my Reliance to track and hit targets. And the Oracle has been destroyed. Very nice kill. Let's go towards the next one. We have... We have nothing yet. Okay. Kinda suspicious. There's a pod, 300... 40 kilometers away from the gate. Oh, we have a worm. Oh, okay, let's focus the faction frigate. The railguns at this range will most likely miss, but that's okay. If I had the mic warp drive, then they would hit because I would quickly increase the distance. And that was a nice kill. The worm got basically popped in couple hits. Next target we have a hurricane. Let's quickly focus fire. Most ships that fly here might be bait ships. At least that's how, uh, how I have experience with that. The hurricane is now into armor. Looks like this hurricane is not a bait hurricane. They are now into hole, and the hurricane has been destroyed. Very nice. You, now, usually I would say let's wait out the criminal timer, but in Nolsec there is no such thing as a criminal timer. You only get the aggression timer, so that's why Nolsec is so much fun. You can do whatever you like and. You don't have to worry about any timers or gate guns or you know things like that. Next target, we have a covetor 2. Now this covetor has an nanocore, and these things can be quite expensive. So expensive boat, yep, going to going to be uh, a very nice kill. Okay, well that's one way how to do the Concord Pass missions. You know. Ever since the PvP Concord Pass missions were released. Our next target, we have a Cinnabal. This Cinnabal has the Tungsten Nanocore. 
I actually like the demo core a lot on the Cinnabel. I haven't been flying that ship in over six or seven months. It's been a while since I since I did fly the Cinnabel. I think it was actually more than that. Eight or nine months. Ever since I got the Ortus, I haven't really been flying the Cinnabel that often. However, that will change. Uh, that ship has some very, some very interesting fits that I kind of want to try out. Next target, we have another Daredevil. A lot of faction frigates have been destroyed today. This Daredevil has a very nice looking nanocore. They have been webbed. Almost, almost got the Daredevil in one hit. And the Daredevil has been destroyed. Very nice. Now let's go towards the next target. We have a Hurricane Logistic. And this Hurricane Logistic trying to burn out from the bubble, but that's not going to work. My battery at 20%, well, good that, good that I have seen that on time. The Logistic Hurricane in low hole, and they have been destroyed. Very nice. A very nice Logistic battle cruiser. These ships can be good bait ships, so always be careful around logistic ships in Nullsack, especially if they are solo. Next target we have a Cyclone. Well, this is going to be a quick one, Cyclone got destroyed very quickly. Very nice. Cyclone can also be one very cheap and very good ship. Might fly one at one point next target. Nero's high mobility. These ships never dropped anything good uh, in my experience. And I guess this is not going to be any different. Only 18 million. And our final targets for today, we have one Mahler and we have one Vexor Navy. Well, the primary target will be the Mahler, of course, because it's it's red and red targets have a priority. The Mahler lost shield. They are now in hull. Okay. Mother has been destroyed. Next target is the Vexel Navy. And the Vexel Navy has been destroyed. Very nice. For a second, I thought that it might be a small fleet that was headed towards our direction. So, uh, as, as you could see, the special operation was quite successful. We, I think we did take some small losses along the way, but nothing, nothing too drastic. I guess mistakes do happen at, at some times, and that's okay. That way, uh, as time goes on, we can improve and we can reduce those mistakes. So, uh, and with that being said, hope that you enjoyed, stay safe, fly safe, and I'll see you next time.